Welcome to SkyBeast Aviation Channel. In this video we explain you how airplanes fly and how lift is generated. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button to support our channel. So let's get started. If you've ever watched a jet plane taking off or coming into land, the first thing you'll have noticed is the noise of the engines. Jet engines, which are long metal tubes burning a continuous rush of fuel and air, give the airplane the needed thrust to create lift. You might think engines are the key to making a plane fly now, but you'd be wrong. Things can fly quite happily without engines, as gliders, paper planes, and indeed gliding birds readily show us. If you're trying to understand how planes fly, you need to be clear about the difference between the engines, the wings, and the different jobs they do. The engines of an aircraft are designed to move the plane forward at high speed. That makes air flow rapidly over the wings, which throw the air down toward the ground, generating an upward force called lift that overcomes the plane's weight and holds it in the sky. So it's the engines that move a plane forward, while the wings move it upward. So how do wings make lift? The wings are the key to making something fly, but how do they work? Most airplane wings have a curved upper surface and a flatter lower surface, making a cross-sectional shape called an airfoil. In a lot of science books and web pages, you'll read an incorrect explanation of how an airfoil like this generates lift. This theory says that when air rushes over the curved upper wing surface, it has to travel further than the air that passes underneath, so it has to go faster, to cover more distance in the same time. According to a principle of aerodynamics called Bernoulli's law, fast-moving air is at lower pressure than slow-moving air, so the pressure above the wing is lower than the pressure below, and this creates the lift that powers the plane upward. Although this explanation of how wings work is widely repeated, it's wrong. It gives the right answer, but for completely the wrong reasons. Think about it for a moment and you'll see that if it were true, acrobatic planes couldn't fly upside down. Flipping a plane over would produce downlift and send it crashing to the ground. But the standard explanation of lift is problematic for another important reason as well. The air shooting over the wing doesn't have to stay in step with the air going underneath it and nothing says it has to travel a bigger distance in the same time. Imagine two air molecules arriving at the front of the wing and separating, so one shoots up over the top and the other whistles straight under the bottom. There's no reason why those two molecules have to arrive at exactly the same time at the back end of the wing. They could meet up with other air molecules instead. This flaw in the standard explanation of an airfoil goes by the technical name of the equal transit theory. That's just named for the incorrect idea that the airstream splits apart at the front of the airfoil and meets up neatly again at the back. So what's the real explanation? As a curved airfoil wing flies through the sky, it deflects air and alters the air pressure above and below it. Why does this happen? As air flows over the curved upper surface, its natural inclination is to move in a straight line, but the curve of the wing pulls it around and back down. For this reason, the air is effectively stretched out into a bigger volume, the same number of air molecules forced to occupy more space, and this is what lowers its pressure. For exactly the opposite reason, the pressure of the air under the wing increases. The advancing wing squashes the air molecules in front of it into a smaller space. The difference in air pressure between the upper and lower surfaces causes a big difference in air speed, not the other way around as in the traditional theory of a wing. The difference in speed, observed in actual wind tunnel experiments, is much bigger than you'd predict from the simple, equal transit theory. So, if our two air molecules separate at the front, the one going over the top arrives at the tail end of the wing much faster than the one going under the bottom. No matter when they arrive, both of those molecules will be speeding downward, and this helps to produce lift in a second important way. We hope this was helpful to you. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching.